hear the word, apply it to your life. But well, that's only done through prayer, much prayer. Much prayer. prayer. Because how I many of the enemy? They'll come in, they'll come in quick. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You can't let the enemy in. What happened? Brother Jim Hodge coming in. Let's give him a warm welcome to you. You know, I have to say, as always, this right here is a privilege. It's, it's a monumental grace that God gives us when he reveals his truth to us. When uh, we ask him specifically, by virtue and power of his Holy Spirit, to reveal his truth to us. Because even in this message, uh, there's some things that need to be covered even regarding the body of Christ, how we relate to each other. It's funny, the top of this note here is blank because uh, I was wondering as far as what a title, but it just occurs to me. A place for his grace. <laughs> That's the working title of this. And you'll come to understand what that means. You know, this, this has been a wonderful book to study, the book of Titus, and, you know, if you know the history on Titus, he was quite the bondservant to Apostle Paul. He was uh, with him to help him on a lot of things, and the entrustment that Paul had given Titus to oversee things and get things in order with the church. You know, that's, Pastor, we, we can never appreciate our pastors enough for all that they do for the ministry, and uh, there, again, we, on behalf of all of us, we thank you, Pastor Rudy, Pastor Nadine, for you accepting the assignment here at Paris, and <laughs> it's a work. All righty, the first place we're going to turn, we're going to have a look at, at Titus chapter 2, we're going to look at verses 11 through 12. God... God, we thank you right now for your this time and receiving your word as always, Father God. And I just thank you that this word is of you, Father God, as you have directed it. Father God, let us be open to receive it, Father, that we, we would get the impartation that you want, that we are perfected evermore unto all righteousness and unto every good work that you have us to do. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray, amen, amen. amen. All righty, starting at verse 11. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. <laughs> you know, that's, 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 a, that's pretty much plain and clear. But... It's, it's clear to us, those who are in Christ Jesus, but as far as the world out there, there's a little bit of this issue around something like that. There's a burden out there. It's this thing called this legalistic religious religiosity in thought that the world has and even some of the church has. One of the missing, you can take this down as a point, one of the missing elements in the world's relationship with God is understanding. Well, my paper wants to fly away. <laughs> Hallelujah. But for the longest time, it seems like the doctrines of men have been the headliners more than God's yearning heart for man to return our love back to him. It seems like the focus has been on just rules and regulations that is in the world's eyes. But we know something different, those of us who are in Christ Jesus. How we are compelled by our love for the Lord, by our knowledge, by the impartation that he's given us by his spirit. Amen. The intimacy. <laughs> it goes beyond anything that man could say or do but by the impartation of God's very Holy Spirit speaking to us, moving us to have compassion on others, to talk to others, to reach out to others. There's more to it than some religion. That's what the world needs to know. 
And they know that through us. And also, because people have that misconception of sin as merely some kind of legalism or something that man imposed upon me that I don't measure up to according to your standard, the real thing about sin is, you know, it's missing the mark, falling short of the glory. But here's another definitive aspect of it. Sin itself is any besetting distraction that would detract your attention from availing yourself to God Almighty and the completion that he has for you in Christ Jesus. It's anything that has that authority over your mind or your heart. It doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> Sin is basically cheating on God in some way. We were created as spiritual beings. We're soul, we're spirit. We were designed to love the one who made us. To be intimate with him. But if there's some other force or substance or spirit other than his own that we're communing with, that we're loving with, <laughs> it breaks his heart. Amen. Pastor John, you've talked about this before many times. It breaks God's heart. You've likened it to the relationship of a the infidelity of a, a man and woman if they're breaking their covenant. It hurts God's heart. And that's the real basis of sin. But fortunately, there's a remnant of his promise that shines abroad in our lives for those of us who are available to him. We have the compulsion to tell people the truth. Tell people that there is a substance. There is salvation. There is love. There is a place where you can truly draw from that will complete your soul. That you don't have to look here. You don't have to look there to the left or to the right. I know a lot of us are continuing to make that step. We're continually being perfected. But we've tasted of the goodness of the Lord. We've tasted of his completion. We've tasted of his fullness, and therefore, we want as much to all of it as we can get. That's why we got to steer away from doctrines that would keep us from the fullness of God. Amen? Amen. Alrighty, let's have a look at Titus chapter 3. We're going to uh, look at verses 13 through 14. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Wait, that's incorrect. That's kind of written wrong. We're still in chapter 2. We're going to look at verses 13 through 14. Let's read. Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. How many people in this house are zealous for good works? Zealous to do things that are going to make our Lord happy. Zealous to win the lost. Zealous for his holiness. <laughs> like Aaron was back in the Old Testament. He was so zealous he ran somebody through with a javelin that didn't come before the Lord with a good vestiger of holiness on them. I, I'm not telling tell, we need to go get some javelins and start running sinners through. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just talking about the love for God that is just that strong and serious and solid. And here's the thing. God gave himself, gave his son. Jesus gave of himself to us, gave up his life as the ultimate investment in us. The ultimate investment. That we should have an eternal destiny and eternity with him. That our lives would be graced unto his righteousness. <laughs> but speaking of investments, how he's investing that I have a question to ask. When it comes to our own and personal lives, how is his investment paying off? 
Hallelujah. Just for us to think about. How is this investment paying off? I'll just say, as I'm compelled to say, are we compelled to praise Him? Are we compelled to worship Him? However, close eyes on our knees, whatever. Are we compelled to serve Him? Amen. Give everything that we are to Him. Are we compelled to do that? Or are we compelled to keep to ourselves where we think it's safe and low profile? We have gifts in this house. Amen. Again, we can never stress this enough. We have gifts up in this house. That's why it's so important to know your relationship, know your calling, and know that you can avail yourself. I mean, I, I think about the gift that, that I have in my life. It was told to me, if I just applied myself, it'd be a quick work. The thing is, I wanted it. I wanted to be active. I wanted to be a part of praise and worship. Sure, my start was shaky. The first time I tried to play the song, I'm like, blah, blah, blah. And people were like, oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> it, it, but it's a perfecting. The more you do it, Amen. the better you get at it. Oh, that's right. Which one of us have, born, have been born into this life having arrived? If you know a person like that, let me know. I, I, I want some of their juice. Have them spit in the cup and I want to drink it. I'm serious. If you know anybody who has arrived, let me know. That's why it's so important that we don't act like Pharisees. I hate to get ahead, but know, know that we're in a perfection process. That he's daily perfecting us. Hallelujah. Amen. I have a note about Bill Weiss here in Christ's sadness. For those of you that know about his 28 minutes he experienced in hell, which is a real place. Amen. And how one of the ways I know it's real is even by the latency it has affected here on the surface of the earth. People acting crazy, doing crazy things. The visions people have and plans and thoughts. Yeah. It's real. But one of the things he mentioned other than the stuff that went on down there in the tortures was the sadness of Christ's heart seeing people fall into the pit. God loves us all so much. He hurts. I don't know where the doctrine came from that God uh, he, he delights in people going to hell. He doesn't. He hurts. For those that you need to know, <laughs> he hurts because he's not the one that sends people to hell. People themselves send themselves there. That's right. Amen. God has done everything he can through his son to give people life, yet there's those who would still refuse it. Hmm. <laughs> That's why we have a commission to share the good news. That there is, again, love. God so, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That just doesn't mean life in this, in this body. That means a life that goes beyond this body. Don't you know that someday you're going to be given a new body that won't have sin, that won't have corruption, that will be made of God's very own essence and light, that will last forever, that we will be able to partake of the tree of life freely? People need to understand that there is a life, quote unquote, life after death. This is just a shell. This, that's all it is. It's just a shell. The real you is a soul and spirit that is an everlasting force that God will clothe in his righteousness and light forever. After all, it is written in Revelations, he that overcomes in this life, I will give him the morning star. Hallelujah. That's an unparalleled glory of the Lord that God shines on you and you reflect like you're a star in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. God is good. Isn't the goodness, isn't God good, his grace and love that he would give us 
this is such a gift of salvation. Wonder why the enemy is so mad. Well, he's going to have to deal with it. He made his choice. Knucklehead. I said it. I said it. I said it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> That's assurance. Thank you. Let's have a look at Titus chapter 3. Here we are. Look at verses 1 and 2. Now, here, now we got to listen up. We're get, getting into some construction here. Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, <laughs> to speak evil of no one, to speak peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to men. <laughs> a little subject, you could take this as a point. It's too easy for the righteous to slip into boastful pride. It's too easy for us to look at somebody else's fault and not take consideration of our own fault. I think one of the biggest burdens in the church, we spend too much time comparing ourselves to one another instead of uplifting each other. Mm. Yeah. We spend too much time and then we wonder why people have an odd impression about Christianity as some religion. Because where's the revelation of Christ? Amen. I, I hate to feel like I'm spiritually doing some pimp slap and believe you me, the hands coming around and hitting me upside the head too. The word of God is all inclusive. I'm learning as I go too. God is that much of a teacher. It's an impartation for all of us. I'm in the process of growing. Lord knows. And I thank him every day that it's just been an adventure and a perfection that I've seen more and more of his goodness and glory as I avail myself to it. Man. Let's avail ourselves continually every day to the glory of God. But others fall short and we tend to forget ourselves. Let me talk about a little subject that has been divisive in the church. Politics. <laughs> Here we go. Politics. Even regarding what we live in here in this land. You know, it, let me just sum it up. No matter who our leaders are, who our commanders in chief are, we have an obligation to love, we have an obligation to do good works, to do that is right, not be slanderous, be peaceable, be gentle, showing humility. And when it comes to a leader, I'm, I'm not being legalistic, I'm just encouraging. Pray these three things. You pray for the protection, you pray for godly wisdom upon them, and you pray that God blesses them. No more, no less. Because anything beyond that, you risk going into a field of judgment. And if you don't have all the facts about somebody, if you haven't even consulted the Holy Spirit about somebody's life, and you've just consulted your flesh or your own thoughts, you endanger yourself. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We're all being perfected, church. It's a growing process. <laughs> Hallelujah. We haven't arrived. We're being perfected. Hallelujah. Continue on with verses 3 through 7. Listen up. For we ourselves were also once foolish, <laughs> disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. <laughs> but when the kindness and the love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us yeah. through the washing of regeneration yeah. and renewing yeah. of the Holy Spirit, whom yeah. he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Ooh, what a gift we have in Jesus. 
that renews us, that washes us clean, who avails his Holy Spirit to us to guide us, to be our comforter. Oh, man. Glory to God. That's some good stuff. And here's, and regarding salvation, before we get out and relate to the world, here's something that we need to ask ourselves. And this is something ask, I ask you individually. What spirit led you to Christ? Was it love? Was it charity? Or was it something else? Was it fear? Was it contention? Was it provocation by dissension? The reason why I ask is because Everything that Christ showed us in the dimension that he showed us, we need to make sure that that is the dimension that we're sharing with others. Christ, the gospel, the truth. That's, that's why I bring up that question. Also, was it the spirit of man that led you to Christ or the spirit of God? Oh, my we're just covering some spiritual technical things here because we need to know about these spiritual technical things. We don't want to scare the fish away because of some spiritual technical difficulty. So we need to know the specs on everything in our spirituality and our relationship with God and be careful that everything is oiled and looped according to how Christ designed it to be. Amen. 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 <laughs> the same love and grace that Christ showed us, we need to show to others. That's right. I didn't get saved by a spiritual, religious, legalistic mallet beating me over my head. I got saved in an environment of love. Of course, you know my testimony. It was my mom at an early age, but... I've had the opportunity to actually see as an adult people who have come in contact with God's grace and are, were absolutely amazed and intrigued and drawn to the Lord, no matter what lifestyle they were in. So important. That we, 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 that we, in everything that we do, we need to be led by the Spirit. We need to be led by Christ. Amen. He, 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 he really needs to be in our heart. Because believe you me, there are people who are trying to take the field out there who don't have the perfection that comes through faith in Jesus Christ. They have trust in the law. They're walking in a, 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 by the law and trying to impose that. That's what Paul was writing to Titus earlier in the chapters about people who are of the circumcision blaring out their mouths about stuff that they didn't need to blare about. Trying to impose stuff upon the Gentiles that were free, that had come to know their freedom in Christ Jesus. And then they're going to put traditions upon them and legalisms that aren't born out of the love of God. That needs to stop in ministry. Amen. So, <laughs> construction, construction. Also, when rebuking or correcting, as I said, we need to be led by the Holy Ghost. We want people to be drawn to Christ. And in the fullness, we don't need anybody's vision of Christ obscured Amen. by stuff. All it takes is one little flap of the flesh and somebody smelling the falsehood. <laughs> you know, we, we can't we can't afford it's hard to say, but we can't we we need to be persevering in good works. And here's a subject. Our works of righteousness. 
our works of righteousness, our fruits of our salvation. They're contingent upon our salvation, but be careful not to think that our salvation is dependent upon our fruits of righteousness. That's another thing that has been going around in the Christian community for far too long, this misconception that you have to work for your salvation, that there's specific things you have to do as far as a work to keep your salvation. And I found out one of those things is evangelism, that people have used as a gauge to gauge other Christians' Christianity. And you can't necessarily do that. What if somebody is on their deathbed and they only have five seconds between they repent and they go to be with the Lord? The Lord is not going to revoke their Christianity because in those five minutes or five seconds they didn't witness to somebody. Amen. I saw a video on YouTube. Let me tell you. Understand something. I saw a video on YouTube about this Korean, young Korean artist, another young lady who had the privilege of going to See, see the visions of hell and stuff like that. She was mentioning, it was like, kind of like Dante's Inferno. There are different customized tortures, depending on what you did. Talking about this and that, people who stole, people who did this, people who murdered, people who were gay and lesbian, and of course, people who didn't tell others about Jesus Christ. And I thought, wait a second. Telling others about Jesus Christ is something that should come natural to a true Christian anyway. What true Christian goes through this life not affecting somebody in Jesus' name? I know my life has done that. I remember when I was in Chapman University Choir, we were on a choir tour. I had eaten too much. My body was using more energy to try to digest what little nutrients it was coming out of the food. My heart went into a double clutch phase, and next thing you know, they called the ambulance. I was on a gurney. <laughs> and even in the fear and excitement, I began to confess God's word. God, I thank you that you are with me always, that you have a plan for me, that this sickness is not unto death. And little did I realize that those words witnessed to two students who were struggling in their questions about God and administered to them. You know, the enemy would want to, the enemy likes to get on my case personally and have me forget all the times I have witnessed and have bared fruit for the Lord. Amen. The time I witnessed to that man and gave him hope and love before he killed his wife in 2001. The enemy would want me to forget all that stuff. Me trying to compare myself to other people. That's something that needs to stop in the body of Christ. God has made us with different personalities, with different abilities, and has given us each individual callings. Some of us have combined callings. But whatever it is, do not, and I repeat, do not compare your calling with another person or think they're not, just because they're not doing what you do, how you do it, when you do it, that they're not as much of a Christian as you. That needs to be flatlined. Yes, I'm a little indignant right now, but it's righteous. Amen. God is good. He's perfected. We're justified by his grace, mercy, and faith in him. That's what we learned in Romans chapter 4. We're justified by faith in Jesus Christ, the accepting of the fullness of his grace and mercies. And because of that, we're overjoyed. Because of that, our cups overflow. And it does affect people. People are affected at my job and it's given me a new understanding why I'm there. I truly have an assignment there. Amen. That's right. That's right. I know that. And it's been going pretty good. All right. Let's look at chapter 3. We're going to look at verses 8 through 9. This is a faithful saying. And these things I want to affirm constantly that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. Verse 9, 
but avoid foolish disputes, genealogies, contentions, and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and useless. What are we always fighting about in the body of Christ? Why are we picking arguments with each other so much? Why are we spending energy cutting each other down? Again, I come on this because this is an important subject. Amen. The light of Christ depends on how we conduct ourselves with one another. So that all, you know, we have our commission. <laughs> the true Christian lifestyle is supernaturally fruitful as a testimony I share. It's super, it's going to witness. Your words are going to be a witness. Your actions are going to be a witness. If you are in Christ Jesus, if you're truly plugged into the vine that he is, you're going to be a witness. His light is going to shine on the inside of you. It's going to affect others. A lot of us here know this. We've seen it. As we go out and witness every, I thank God for every ministry in this house and all the ministries that God is going to continue to increase. As I said, they're all needed. They're all important. Not one is greater than the other. They're, and we're all one. Amen. When one has a victory, we all have a victory. Amen. We don't have time to gripe, to fight. We have to be about the Father's business again. Amen. Going forward. We're one. <laughs> You know, also, we're, our job is to maintain, perform our duties and services and ministries God has called us for. Know what you're called to do. The church needs not to be divided by anything that promotes wickedness. Again, I already talked about pride and also competition in the church. Haven't we seen too much of that in church, competition with one another? You have pastors competing with other pastors. How many people go to their church? You have psalmists competing with other psalmists. Who has the best song or who's selling the most CDs? It's all about the anointing of God. Who are any of us? You have evangelists competing. How many souls I saved? Number one is about how many souls Jesus saves. Number two no matter what kind of crown you think you're going to earn, having saved all these souls, there's going to come a time where you're going to see your Lord and Savior in all of His glory, in His splendor, in His beauty, in His glory. Amen. You're going to take that crown. <laughs> you're going to cast it before His feet. Don't you ever think that it's all about you? I know it's not all about me. Boy, I, I'm honored in everything that God avails me to do because it's been more than I've asked for. It's been more than what I've ever expected. God takes his children on journeys. For a lot of us, he hasn't unfolded the whole plan but just giving us parts because a lot of us would freak out if he showed us the whole thing. I know a couple of years ago, if what has been revealed in my life was that's going to happen in my life had been revealed to me a couple of years ago, I would have jumped through a window. I would have freaked out. Oh my God, no. Ow, ow, ow. But now I'm at a place of maturity in my Christian life where I say, Father God, I love you. Whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do it. Lord Jesus, I love you. Whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do it. Holy Spirit, whatever you bear witness of any truth that I need to walk in, I'm going to walk in it. Because I love you. I love you. I love you. Amen. Amen. Am I, there's nothing vain about that. 
we can never shout enough of our love to God. That's right. Never. So that's about that's about it with this message. I've I don't want to exceed any more time. But we just need to be mindful of our fruit, how we're loving one another, how we're communicating with each other, and how we're fit to reach the world. In Christ Jesus, by his grace, by his love, by faith, by his truth. And let's continue to go forth this year and be encouraged that God has good things for us. Individually and as a church, he's perfecting us. Those morning stars that he's called us to be as we endure and serve him, they're going to shine throughout eternity. We don't have to wait till we make heaven before we start to shine for Jesus. Father God, we come before you right now. We just thank you for this time. We thank you for this word. Father God, everything that your spirit has bared witness of, let the enemy not have any place, chance, to take from our minds, our hearts, from our souls, from our spirits, let alone the unction and the functions of our natural bodies to do your will. Father God, we just ask that you continue to bless this ministry, bless our lives, continue to keep us going forward, keep us doing those things that are good and pleasing and acceptable and profitable. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap for his goodness, for his truth. Thank the Lord in this house. We have a commission. Let's be encouraged. Let's not be down. Let's be uplifted. Let's praise the Lord in our coming and in our going. Hallelujah. Pastor, it's time. I'm doing it. Yes. Praise God. We need to be up.